Welcome back to the AI Grid and in today's video, this is going to be a sponsored video on a topic that I didn't think we would get to cover because I haven't actually seen any software tools that do allow you to do this. But today we're going to be talking about GPTbots.ai, which is not to be confused with OpenAI's GPTbot. So what exactly is GPTbots AI? Long story short, this is an AI program or some software that essentially allows you to create your own AI bots that you can actually share with other people and allows you to customize large language models so for those of you who don't understand if you understand exactly how large language models work you know that OpenAI and you know Claude and these teams that build these large language models what they essentially do is they train these large language models on certain pieces of data but what you can do is you can do the exact same thing now when I was messing around with the software it was really cool because I was actually able to create my own bot that I could interact with that I could share with people and that is where I do believe that this is going to be one of the selling points for this platform because you're going to be able to share these bots and if someone creates a really good bot i'm pretty sure that it's going to be used by a lot of people now i also do have to say that i am surprised that this software hasn't come to the market just yet because it is actually really good so i'm going to show you guys how you can create your own bot and exactly why this is so effective so so if we head on over to the my creation area over here you can already see this is the type of bot that i've created and one that i've shared but i'm going to go ahead and create a new bot so when you want to create a new bot you have two options you can see knowledge and q a and you can see ai assistant now, I've got to be honest with you guys this is actually a lot better than some of the other ai bots that i've tried online there are a lot of popular ones that i did try and they just weren't effective when you do try to use them for whatever they use so the one i created was an ai assistant so let's do an ai assistant bot and let's name this uh you know this is just an example so before you make a bot like this and you try and sue me for defamation understand that this is just an example but um this is just demonstrating the bot capabilities so i'm going to name this bot um a health bot okay and essentially what a health bot is going to be is i'm just going to pretend that this is is some kind of doctor bot okay it's of course not but i'm going to pretend that this is a doctor bot okay so that's why i'm doing this so let's say for example uh, we want to make a doctor bot okay so something like medpalm now this is of course not medpalm but medpalm is a large language model from google research designed for medical domain and this is nowhere near the level but i want to show you how you can fine tune a bot so that you can get it to do exactly what you want to do if that makes sense so you can see that it says what would the bot start to say the conversation so i'm actually going to use chat gpt to help me fill out this information so i'm going to go ahead over now to chat gpt okay so you can see that i've input some of the data into gpt4 um and i think this is like gpt4 turbo because this is just generally way too fast but um so what we have here is of course you can see i've asked it for the you know what, what we want to start the conversation with so it says uh hello i'm your health assistant yada 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 so i'm gonna copy and paste this in and this prompt that you use with this app i'll leave this in the description but i'm gonna go ahead and copy this and put this in then you can see that this is what it's going to use to start the conversation then of course you can see that we do have some examples for the identity prompt and the identity the identity prompt is essentially just how the bot identifies how it's supposed to interact how it's supposed to be so you can see right here that the identity prompt which is optional you don't have to do it but um this is how it's going to be okay and of course of course so we're going to add ourselves a picture so i decided to add this random picture of this person right here there we go you can see that the format supported and there we go okay so now you can see right here that it says what would the bot state to start the conversation hello i'm your health assistant yada 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 and there's also many different cool things about this software that you should know that we'll get talking about to you after but of course if you don't want to do this complicated thing that i just did you can of course click identity and then of course you can see you want it to be a translator it can be a translator if you want it to be a composer a screenwriter um novelist now what you need to understand as well and i'm gonna show you after as well so let me just go ahead um with all this stuff uh, it's a bit confusing but i will just go ahead um and explain it to you temperature the lower the temperature the more stable it's going to be and the more precise but the higher the temperature the more creative it's going to be so if you have a creative writing task i would put this all the way up but if you have a more precise like medical task or something that requires python or script or code you want to put it down here additionally what you can also do is you can use gpt 4.0 the 8k version or the gpt 3.5 turbo the 16k version it's completely up to you claude and other models are not available yet um and then of course the dot correlation this is optional you can you know set this or not um and of course we've got responses to irrelevant questions so for example since this is a health bot we probably do want to set this to not answer irrelevant questions but um if we were deploying this on like an actual application so for example if i was running a business i would definitely put this off because i wouldn't want people to be asking my health bot certain questions about sports because it'll still give it an answer so that's completely up to you so let's go ahead now 
now this is done um and this looks pretty good i think everything here looks pretty decent and this is just some basic information here we go let's go create so i've now created this health bot okay so what i want to do is i'm gonna click the share button then um links allow up to 10 users and then um we're gonna say this is just valid for a day and maximum this amount of conversations per user so let's create this share link right here then i'm gonna go ahead click copy and then i'm gonna go ahead into another browser to show you how this works so i've clicked paste in and of course you can see right here we now have our health bot. So it says, hello, I'm your health assistant here to provide general information on medical topics. Please remember, I can't diagnose or offer personalized medical advice. Always consult a healthcare professional if you have any concerns. How can I assist you today? So let's start for existence and we say, um, let's just do, uh, you know, maybe a small test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, how good this is really going to be. So I'm going to give you guys some um, basic symptoms. Okay. So I've decided right here to put um, something basic in. I've decided to put, I've been feeling really tired lately. My nose has been stuffy and I've had a persistent cough for a few days and that. Now, sometimes I feel a bit warm and I've been sneezing more than usual. Any idea what this could be? So I've then input this in and remember you can also have voice as well. So you can see right here, it says based on your symptoms you've described, it's possible that you may be experiencing a common cold or seasonal allergies. Both can cause fatigue, stuffy nose, coughing, sneezing, and a mild increase in body temperature. However, it's important to note that I'm not a healthcare professional and cannot provide a definitive diagnosis. I recommend consulting with a healthcare professional for a proper evaluation and advice on how you manage your symptoms. So you can see right there that it continues um, and it gives a pretty decent description, okay? So we know that this person is having a cold and we can say, you know, for example, let's say we're having this cold. Um, what do you think I should do to relieve my symptoms? Um, and then we can do to relieve your symptoms. There are a few things you can do, yada, 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 over the counter suppressants, da, 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 da. Um, of course, they can provide personalized healthcare. So, with this, what you can do is you can see you can create personalized bots that you can then share. So, I think this is really cool. Now, you have to understand based on what I did right here, you have to understand that this bot was just created in five seconds, okay? If you're really, really smart, you can create a huge bot identity that's going to be really, really crazy. And this is something that, you know, you can, um, you know, share and really, really well. So what I want to show you is um, something that I would personally use and I wish they had this before. Um, OpenAI does have something like this, but it isn't as great. And I'm going to show you, okay, just how to use this. And but yeah, I'm going to show you another method of bots that you can create because this is actually really, really cool. And this is the one that people would mostly use if this software was out earlier, but you know, you can still do this. So recently what I just did around five seconds ago was I created a mid journey prompt creator bot. So essentially what this is, um, I'm going to show you. So I created a prompt. I'm going to show you the details. So if I click edit, you can see that I put in this identity. You can see that it's basically, if you just look at it, it's essentially a bot that you can use to create mid journey prompts. And I said, can I get a McLaren racing down the British streets? And then it gives me the prompt that I can use in mid journey for a McLaren racing down the British streets. And it says a prompt of a high speed shot of a McLaren racing down the streets of Britain, James Smith, automotive, automotive photography, contest winner, dynamic motion blur, British red flag in the background, sleek aerodynamic design, yada, yada, yada. And then of course it says, do you want three more prompts? And then it gives me three more prompts. Now this was a fully detailed one that I did work on and one that I did find on Reddit. But the point is, is that this makes um, sharing prompts and sharing bots really, really easy. Now, something crazy about this software that you can't do with other things, okay? Um, and this is the main selling point of this app, which I'm about to show you right now. And this is where things get really, really interesting, okay? So the GPT bot's knowledge base supports uploading data. And this is where things get really, really crazy. So when you edit your bots, you can see right here that we have bot model. And of course, as you know, you can change the model and all that kind of stuff. And you can change the temperature. All you need to do is click edit right here. Now, what's crazy about this, okay, is that something that's really good is that you can also add suggested questions. And this is crucial because it allows a much better conversation experience because sometimes you don't know exactly what to ask. So this is something that you might want to turn on, especially, you know, for a health bot. So you can edit, you can turn this on and it's going to help the user um, and guide them through that thing. And of course, you can turn it up to GPT 4.0 if you think it's really smart. Now, what's also good, like we stated before, you can do the temperature and stuff like that. But if we click save, you can see you can click knowledge learning, okay? And this is where the game changes. So this is what I was saying, guys. You can upload your own data set to GPT Bots AI. And this is why it's crazy because if you upload, let's say, for example, you want to add a data set and um, we can just be text, you can upload new information, okay, that's after 2021. So one of the, you know, key um, drawbacks of ChatGPT is that data is only up until 2021. So if there's new data from after 2021, let's say, for example, something new in the health industry comes in, you can just literally enter this here and the data will be added to that data set, okay? Um, and that's crazy to me because this is something that you can't really do with OpenAI. I'm not sure how they managed to figure this out. I don't think it's that hard to code, 
but something like this is very very effective so this is what i would be using and of course um you can do vector search you can do you know documents you can add a data set or a batch update so this is something that i do think is going to be more and more effective um and if you are for example let's say you're a screenplay writer you want to write a specific type you can add your own data set of your own screenplays into this so that it knows what kind of style you write in so also we here is where we can add plugin capabilities so for example this allows you to basically create a stock trading bot so for, so for example if we go back to the plugin market you can see what we've got here is portfolios lab and essentially what this does is this allows you to you know um query stock etf and fund market data by company name so that when you go into your bot so we go llms no in fact my creation then we go into this one right here then we can edit this and then we go into the plugin management we can just add a bot and then let's say we add this and then of course you can see we've added this plugin so it's going to be able to now analyze stocks and of course we can then add in many different plugins if we want now the plugin market isn't huge um or maybe mine's just not that great because i don't know how to search but um yeah it's 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 really cool because once they manage to add more plugins to this that's when this is going to become a complete game changer now i don't know if OpenAI is going to add something like this because the ai space does move rapidly but um another thing that i did forget to mention when talking about gpt bots is the fact that you can actually teach these bots certain things so of course we did manage to build a health bot um, this is something that you can train on specific data but of course if i click edit right here and then of course if i go over to knowledge learning this is where you can essentially upload your own documents and you might be thinking why would i want to upload my own documents for this bot um doesn't it already know everything through gpt4 yes but the problem is knowledge cutoff is 2021 which means if new information if new research comes out after 2021 how are you going to get that data in you're not just going to feed it to the bot what you can do is you can get whatever document it is going to be for a pdf you just go right here and then you click the download button and then of course you click the download button you click save and then you import it in so right here you can see this is a uh, some uh i just typed in really rare disease i saved it as a pdf and of course i'm going to click upload so i'm going to click add data set and then of course you can see text as url or file so i'm going to click um of course a file and then i'm going to upload and then of course you can see right here it says click files into this area to drag and upload so you can see right here i'm just going to click that in and then of course uh you can click save so now hopefully uh now that that's done if i go back here so now if i go to use this bot hopefully uh when i use it essentially uh if i click share <laughs> i can ask this health bot can can you tell me about this okay um and then i'm going to see if it can actually tell me about that specific thing okay and then of course you can see that it is referencing uh the actual document so so that's why you need to be able to use this upload documents feature because with the custom data you're able to successfully create a bot that has more accurate and up to real time data so another thing i did forget to add as well is that you can also add plugins so for example let's say for the health bot here if you wanted to edit it what you can also do is do plugin management now of course you can see right here that this plugin management that you can have is you can have any one that you want to do if of course if you go on the plugin marketplace but of course you can see right here there's certain plugins that you can add in of course there should be a tutorial guide here but essentially just add the plugin whichever one you want so for example on the mid journey one um, i didn't add any plugins to my software just yet but of course if you just want to add it you just click add and then essentially when you ask it certain things you know for example this is a portfolios lab so essentially it's about investment performance so now you'd be able to ask that specific ai about certain investment performance which is of course a lot better than just having a standard ai because a lot of the times the, the way how chat gpt has fine-tuned their software you can't ask it certain questions but if you do ask it certain questions now about investing it's going to call on this of course add-on and then it's going to add that details into its responses and of course like we stated this is the plugin marketplace um and there's lots that are going to be added so whilst there's only around it shows nine at the moment maybe my thing isn't loaded properly there's going to be more that are going to be added and then of course you're going to be able to build your custom chat gpt software a lot more easily another example of how plugins work right here you can see the plugin market what you want to do is click add so you're adding the weather widths to your your bot whatever bot that you have click add plugin then of course add the weather whiz then of course once you've backed out of that you can go ahead and chat with it and once you can chat with it you can then of course ask it questions about the weather that it's going to respond to in real time so this is real-time data which is of course as you know something that many large language models do struggle with so once again this is why the need for plugins is there and this is why something like gbt bots is going to be really really effective in many different use case scenarios this is a really simple user interface um, and i think it's a one-click thing where you can just share bots 
Um, and yeah, it's it's crazy. I'm not going to lie, guys. This is something that I'm going to be using. Of course, when I want to go make a mid-journey prompt, I'm going to use this one. You know, of course, with the health bot, I think what people are going to do is they're going to customize this. And I think they're going to add this to an API and then just add it behind the website. Like, let's say, for example, you wanted to make your own small version of ChatGPT. But this is what you can do. You can create a bot, um, add it, white label it. Um, and then this is something that you can have. So let me know if you guys found this interesting. If you found this cool, I'll leave a link to this in the description. I'll leave a link for you to test these bots in the description as well, because it's something that you can use. Um, and I do think this is free for you to use right now. So I would go ahead and use this. Um, so with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to leave a like. If you do hit the user inter page and you do see it in Chinese and you do get a bit confused, just hit the top right um, and put it in English um, and that will be fine. So with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, see you in the next one.